Hey everyone, this is Benny's Freshwater Aquatics and today we're going to be going over a fun topic and it's shrimp keeping. What type of shrimp should you get? So in our shrimp room we actually keep two different types of shrimp. There are many more in the hobby but these two are very similar. We got our Neo Caridinas on this side. We got five tanks set up with all different colors here. And then we also have our Caridina style shrimp over on this other side. They are actually technically different species and there are a lot of very small differences between the two of them, some a little bit larger than the other. But starting off, we'll kind of begin with our Neo Caridinas. Uh, we got our snowballs, we have yellow rice, orange reelies, blue dreams, and we also have some fire reds over here. And these are actually the types of shrimp that got me started into the hobby and kind of started this whole snowball effect that we got going on here. But the reason why I really liked them is because the tank maintenance. All of these are actually set up off of tap water and then I have water conditioner in there to dechlorinate and everything like that. But with these tanks, since that's all you need to do, water changes become very easy. Once a tank's set up, all you gotta really do is top it off and stay on top of all of your testing and everything. But it really makes kind of shrimp keeping very easy. Um, another reason why I really like our Neo Caridinas is if you were to have kind of a community tank or something like that, a lot of fish out there cohabitate okay with Neo Caridinas. You know, you really have to kind of do your research a little bit and kind of think about what you're going to be putting them in with. But we even have pea puffers upstairs and our pea puffers don't bother these guys. And it might not sound like a big thing, but if you do have a couple of tanks, one big kind of obstacle whenever keeping shrimp is you have to kind of selectively breed them if you actually want them to stay nice and keep their true colors and everything like that. And the issue that kind of comes with that is if you don't have another tank that you can actually pull the less desirable shrimp out of and put them into the new tank, you're going to start getting some wild types and what I mean by that is you know when your shrimp start to reproduce and breed and everything like that you know if you're not taking those less desirable ones out you might get some that are a little bit clearer than the rest you might get some that are a little bit brown and stuff like that and even though you do still have that on the caradina side of everything it's a lot easier for patterns to transfer over with caradina shrimp than it is with neo caradina you know, that's not everyone's kind of downfall with these types of shrimp, of course, you know, and we still love them. That's why we do carry them, and I think it's a very good starting point for everyone. But as far as kind of making up your own type of lineage or new pattern or trying to get some colors to blend, you're going to have a really hard time with Neos. Um, now if we go over here to the other side of the room, we got a bunch of stuff going on here and we'll try to kind of post some different updates or shorts or reels about everything else. But um, with Caradinas, the water parameters, you know, it's not necessarily harder, but the issue that you kind of run into is you can't use tap water for these guys. So this little corner that I have is just designated for all of our water changes. I have pure RO water in the front, and then I remineralize my RO water, and I store that in the back. I have it very nice. Our water changes are still pretty simple, just because of the way we have it set up. But for a lot of people, this kind of overcomplicates it a little bit. You know, we have a lot of tanks, and on tank maintenance day, it still goes by very easily and pretty quick. But it is a lot of extra stuff to kind of keep in mind if you are shrimp keeping and you want to kind of try them out. You know, you can still always get a smaller tank or not necessarily even a small tank, but you can still try it out. But one big thing when we went from Neo Caradinas to Caradinas is that all of a sudden you're testing more types of things for the water. And you're starting to store things like remineralizers and you have to think about getting kits like GH and KH tests. And you know, you might be using something like that for other aquariums, but you know, when we were doing all of our shrimp keeping, we didn't start testing for GH and KH until we actually got our caradinas. You know, it is very beneficial to know all that whenever you're keeping other fish, especially if they have sensitivities to other things. But it's just one other obstacle to kind of keep in mind and kind of think about, hey, what do I have and what else will I need if I do decide taking these other shrimp on?
everything we are kind of mentioning in this video, it's never to kind of discourage anyone from keeping any of these types of shrimp. But I will say when I started, you know, I was completely in the dark with it. I was having trouble with my neocaridinas just because I was still kind of new to fish keeping in general. So there was a lot of new things that I really wasn't ready for that I wish I would have known when I first started. And that's why, you know, if you guys do have any questions or concerns or if you want to kind of know what else you might need for this type of hobby, you could always reach out to us. You know, we are out on a lot of different platforms nowadays. Our big one that we are trying to grow is going to be our Discord channel just because, you know, if you are ever looking for anything like floaters or if you want to possibly purchase any of these shrimps in the future, just keep that in mind. Discord is probably going to be the place that we learn to love and kind of get the community together. But like always, please follow, subscribe, and if you guys want to see anything else, just let us know.